Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we've still got a few people still to join us. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, have a chat with you for a couple of minutes. I'm David. Uh, I work for the Institute of Physics. Um, you're not going to be hearing much from me. I'm just going to be reading out your questions to our two physicists who have uh, come to speak to us this evening. There's Abby. Hello, Abby. Hi, everyone. And we've got Lucy as well. Hello, Lucy. Hello. Okay, hopefully you saw that uh, we, um, the thing that I was showing you uh, so that you can see how to um, ask questions. So if you open it up with this little thing here, um, and then you're able to type the questions into the box. Um, we've got our first question in. Uh, good evening from 4th Wilford Brownies uh, from Claire. That's absolutely brilliant. Glad to have you with us. Uh, pleased you're here. Um, we're also going to ask you a couple of poll questions, uh, a couple of questions this evening. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, answer them um, at the start. So um, hopefully this works. I'm going to wait for everybody to get into the room first. So Abigail, Abby, sorry, um, is a physicist um, at Nottingham University. And Lucy is also a physicist at Nottingham University. But just because they're at the same place doesn't mean that they uh, do the same thing in any way, and they are very different people. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There we go. So, um, sorry, I've forgotten what I was going to say. I've done this like six or seven times. <laughs> um, right. So we now have the second Burley Brownies. They have also joined us. Um, and they're looking forward to doing it. Right, so what we're going to do this evening is that uh, both of our physicists are going to introduce themselves to you. Uh, it'll take them about five, 10 minutes each. Um, they're gonna tell you about themselves and how they got to where they are and things like that. Um, and then we're going to throw it open to you. So for about the second 40 minutes or so, uh, you can all send in your questions. I hope you've got lots of questions because I will then read them out to them in the order that they come in and hopefully we'll get through them all. And you're allowed to ask anything you like uh, about the things um, that you see here, uh, about the stuff that in their background and how they got to where they are and everything else. So before we start, I would really like to know whether you know what a physicist is. So if you could all actually vote on that one, you should see it on your screen now, hopefully. And if you could actually click on this and tell me whether you know what a physicist is. Okay, everyone's voting now. Yeah, we're at half the people have now voted. And I think we've had two people know what a physicist is. Okay, that's fantastic. Everybody's going at it now. Anyone else? No. Right. So there we go. Shall I share the results with you? So you should all hopefully see now that 82% of you don't know what a physicist is. I'm hoping we're going to fix that this evening. So hopefully that will be sorted. And the second thing, and I'm thinking I know what the answer to this is, do you think you would like to be a physicist when you grow up? Okay, people are voting, collecting responses. We've not got a yes yet. I really hope we're gonna fix that tonight. That'll be fantastic if we do. Right, brilliant. So I'm going to share that one as well. So there you can see that uh, three quarters of you, open mind, see how it goes. Uh, but yes, uh, we're going to find out what a physicist is, and I hope when you find out what one is, that you might actually be interested in doing this in the future. So without further ado, we're going to start with Lucy, who's going to tell us some stuff about what she does as a physicist and her background and everything else. And I think she's got a couple of things to stick on her head as well. So uh, hopefully that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm going to disappear for a couple of minutes and we're going to listen to Lucy. 
Um, hi everyone, I'm Lucy and I'm a imaging physicist um, and what I do is I look at um, your brain waves um, and using um, sensors and to see what's going on in your brain um, and what happens if you move your finger or um, if you saw my picture on the opening slide, there was a picture of me um, holding a ukulele uh, so we can see what happens when um, you play a musical instrument. Um, so um, in your brains, there are, um, there's lots of different regions. So I've got um, a little hat here, um, which shows What's go what your brain looks like um, if we had a look inside. So can you imagine that this is my brain? Um, and um, what we can do is we can get a, a sensor and put this next to your head and we can um, look at what's going on in, this is the motor part of the brain when you wiggle your finger We'll be able to see this bit of the brain light up um, so that's what I do um, as a physicist I uh, look at brains um, and when I was in school I didn't know that I wanted to be a physicist um, I really enjoyed science and I really enjoyed maths um, and I actually wanted to do geography um, I really enjoyed learning about volcanoes and um, rivers and what's going on in the world. Um, but then I um, realised I also liked um, science and um, learning about space. And I remember I saved up for um, a telescope um and i was able to go in our back garden and um have a look at the sky and that really sparked my interest in physics um and i ended up going on to do physics at um at big school and um doing maths as well which i really enjoyed so that's how i got into physics um i also had an amazing teacher um, Mrs. Bennett, she um, really um, sparked my interest in physics, um, which is why I chose to carry on with it. Um, and even though um, I don't look at the sky anymore or do astronomy, um, I really enjoy using physics um, to look at the body and um, learn more about the brain, uh, which so yeah, um, that's what that's what I enjoy doing uh, as my job. Um, but also, I like doing th other things in my spare time. So I quite like um, arts and crafts. Um, hang on, I've got. Um, the other day at the weekend I made this little cat out of felt um this is my a little model of my boyfriend's cat uh, it's called Rocky um and um I also like to crochet which is a bit like knitting um which is what I've been doing uh, I made this little cow um so hopefully um like at the end of the evening you'll like know a bit more about what a physicist is um and i think um abby now her abby will be able to tell you a bit more about what she does now that's fantastic lucy uh we've already had six questions in 
Uh, I'm not going to ask them right now because Abby's going to uh, say, I, I told you people are going to ask about the brain and we've got a lot of stuff about the brain. Uh, also, it's fantastic that you, you're like the third person who knits and crochets. Uh, we had a whole kind of like sea menagerie in the last one uh, where people were getting into that. That's that's absolutely fantastic. So, yes, thank you for the questions that have been coming in. We will get into that. Just before we go, you showed us a helmet a minute ago. Can you show us your helmet? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. So this is this is one of the um, scanners that we use. Um, it's a bike helmet, and what we can do is slot these sensors in. So these are our brain sensors, um, and they can measure your brain waves. Um, and we can slot them in. I don't know if I can do it without like, seeing it from the top. Oh yeah, there we go. But you can slot them in and then um, we can scan your brain like this. So, yeah. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It looks like something out of some crazy science fiction film, but this is exactly what we do. So we're, we're going to be, I bet there's going to be a question about reading minds. I bet you there is. I was about to ask you it, but somebody else will ask it. It's absolutely fine. Right, we're going to move on to Abby now, who works in an entirely different bit of the university on something entirely different, because physics isn't just one subject. It's about 40 or 50 different subjects. And once you've got your physics degree, you can do so many different things. So Abby's going to tell us about something else entirely, hopefully. Yes, and can you put the screen share on? Okay. Okay, hello. So hopefully you should be able to see my, my slides. So I'm Abby and I do nanoscience. So nanoscience is really, 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 really small science. So the best way to judge the size of it to you is if you have one of your one of your hairs on your head, then so the thing that I look at in my nanoscience is about a hundred thousand times smaller than your hair. So it's absolutely tiny things that I look at, and I look at them. You can't look at them with your eyes and you can't look at them with light. So I look at them with really, really sharp bits of metal. So this thing on the left is a bit of a bit of metal that I, I, I made just to look at things on a surface. And um, so you can see it kind of gets tinier and tinier and tinier um, up to the very end where it's a really sharp point. And with these really sharp points, um, I look at different molecules on surface. So different things on the surfaces and they go into different shapes. So here are a few of the things that I look at. So the thing in the middle, that's what gold looks like. So you might know about gold because that's what jewelry is made of often. So that's what, when you look at it on the tiny, tiny, tiny scale, that's what the surface of gold looks like. And then my little things on the left that look a bit like Cheerios, they're not Cheerios, they're far, far smaller. So they're about, they're only like 10 nanometers wide. So like I said, 100,000 times smaller than your hair. So those are about 10,000 times smaller than your hair. So to be able to string a lot of them onto your hair. Um, and then the thing on the right is some little chains, or little, little, little tiny molecules. And the, what I like to look at is how they pack onto the surface. So you can see here, they pack in two different ways. So I've got like a nice zigzaggy bit, and then I've got some nice straight bits here. And so I'm interested in why they go like that and why these form their clumps like that. So that's what I do now. I didn't always know I wanted to do this. so. When I was really little, I really liked science. When I was at primary school, when I was about 10 years old, I went on a special science day trip and I got to learn all these demonstrations and I got to take them back to my primary school and do them in assembly. So we got to throw some custard around because when you squish up custard, it changes. And we got to make these little tiny rockets and um, mine went a bit wrong and it went through the ceiling of the school hall. I think that was the moment that I realized that maybe physics is quite fun. Um, so my little rocket still up in that ceiling of my primary school. Um, but then when I got a little bit older, I wanted to be a marine biologist because I absolutely loved being underwater and being in the water and looking at plants. And then I got a bit older and I decided that biology was a bit mucky for me. I didn't like the mess. So when I was a bit older and I liked maths a lot and I knew that you could do maths, but I didn't want to do maths by itself. I wanted to do it with other things. So then. I was hearing lots about CERN, which is what this picture in the middle is. So then I thought that that would be a really cool place to work. So I thought maybe I'd be a particle physicist. And then when I was at university, 
I decided that maybe I didn't like the maths as much as I thought I did. Um, it was getting a bit too, bit too equation-y for me. So I decided I wanted to do something a bit more practical. So I really liked doing chemistry and I really liked doing physics. And I was doing a degree that let me do, let me do both. So I was just at university and I was studying chemistry and physics. And I was like, I like these two so much. What if I could do something that I do chemistry and physics? And that's what I do. So nanoscience, I use chemistry and I use physics. More of the physics than the chemistry most of the time, but the two combine in my subject. So I look at small molecules and small bits of material um, using physics techniques. But I don't just do that. I do a lot of other things in my spare time. So I volunteer um, with the ambulance service. I do lots of sewing. I did a lot of that during lockdown. I made quite a few things. Um, and then before that, when, when we were still allowed to go to the theatre, that's me at the bottom here conducting a show, um, which I did during my PhD um, in Nottingham. So that's some of the other things I like to do. So. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, I love that picture of CERN. I've got it literally on the wall just there, exactly the same picture. <laughs> um, I'm also loving the fact that uh, you found the maths a little bit too much eventually. That's me as well. So I'm a physicist who doesn't like the uh, really extensive bits of maths. Uh, so that's absolutely brilliant. Do you want to come back and join us as well, Lucy? So hopefully you're all interested in getting this badge here. I've got about 2,000 of them in a box under my desk, just waiting for people to complete the badge and get hold of it. Uh, there's a little bit of a backlog on, but I promise you I'm working as hard as I can to get them all out. Uh, so that's absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's brilliant that you talked about the maths because one of the very first questions we had was about that. Hold on, I'm just finding it. <laughs> um, right, so, and I've just lost that. There we go. Right. So um, in this evening, we have the fourth Wilford Brownies, the second Burley Brownies, the 16th Sheffield Brownies and the 57th Sheffield Brownies. All very excited. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, and somebody actually asked, it sounds like a cool job. Can you do that job without maths? Um, that's um, Alice has asked that one. You need some amount of maths but you don't need lots of maths, especially in what I do. People come into what I do from lots of different subjects. So people come into it from le learning lots about chemistry, learning lots about physics, learning lots about maths if they wanted to. But you don't need lots of it, but you need to have some of it to get you basics there. Yeah, there's, um, there's physicists who um, do all the calculations and the maths and then they'll pass all that maths onto the people who do experiments um, and then the people who do experiments can uh, use it um, to help them find out things. Yeah, that it sounds like we've got three experimenters in the room. <laughs> there are, if you absolutely love maths, there are special things you can do like astrophysics and things like that where you can do a lot of maths. Um, right, um, we have a question. What Claire asks, what part of your brain makes dreams? Do you know that, Lucy? We're going to test your brain knowledge. Um, I don't know what part of the brain makes dreams. Um, there's um, there's a, a kind of brain scanner where they that they can use while you're asleep. It's called um, EEG, and they stick loads of little sensors on your head. And then um, when you go to sleep, they can measure your brain waves and find out what's happening um, in your head and which parts of the brain are more active while you're asleep, because your brain doesn't just um, stop when you're um, asleep. Um, there's lots of things going on, but I don't know what part of the brain um, makes dreams. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can like, find out. <laughs> okay, uh, from the 57th Sheffield Brownies, we want to know, um, what was your most exciting experiment? Can you imagine such a thing? 
I've had some very exciting experiments. They're just very small. Um, so the picture I showed with the things in the wiggly lines and in the straight lines, that was very exciting to me because um, it's one of the prettiest and best looking images I've ever got on that that day. So, well, quite a long time actually. Um, but before that, I, I remember when I was, when I was started uni and I was doing an experiment, we had to do an experiment in chemistry. It was quite a boring experiment, but then it became exciting when it went wrong and exploded instead of doing what it was meant to do. So sometimes when they go wrong, it's a bit fun. And you still, still learn things about like, it was the pressure got too high and we weren't paying attention to it. So. I love experiments that explode. I once had an experiment where I was actually trying to make lasers explode and two of them did. <laughs> that was fantastic. Lucy, how about you? Um, one of the most exciting experiments I did was, um, so if you, on the picture before you, we started the call, um, there was a picture of me wearing this helmet um, and playing a ukulele. And um, one of our uh, colleagues in uh, the department was looking at um, what happens in your brain when you play an instrument. Um, and what happens is you learn to play an instrument like does your um does your brain change um so i got to learn to play really like a few chords on the ukulele and um we got i had my brain scanned while i was doing that um using this helmet actually uh but we've moved on now so we've got a different helmet which is why i can bring that one in um <laughs> Is it true that you can only have five strings? Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know what no, 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 I'm thinking of banjos, aren't I? Yes, they've only got four. Right. Following on from the exciting experiment, um, somebody also wants to know, did you ever do anything that scared you? Have you done anything scary in physics? Uh, so the, the instruments I work with scare me a lot sometimes. <laughs> because they have very high power supplies to them and they have lots of scary warning labels on them uh, which can be a bit <laughs> scary but you just have to have to be careful and then it's fine. I, I always wonder if you're working with something really expensive whether it's scary but you uh, might break it or something. Lucy do you use expensive stuff? Um, the sensors that we use um, they're really small and they're, they're quite delicate um, this is a fake one. This is not a real one. Um, but there are, we've got some new ones that are even smaller than this. So this is about the size of my hand. But now we have ones that are this big and they're really small and very expensive. And um, they're very easy to... Um, well, Claire, Claire says that she likes maths and science and Harriet wants to know, is your job exciting? Do you get excited at work? Yeah, definitely. I always find that you, I never know what I'm going to, with an experiment, whilst I've planned it, you never quite know where it's going to go. So it can be really exciting. Mm -hmm. Do you get the flip side? I can't, sometimes it can be a bit boring, but then when it's really exciting, it's an amazing day. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same. Um, some days can be really exciting and you can do an experiment and come back and then analyse all your results and create some really nice pictures um yeah <clears throat> okay we've got an next fundamental expert uh kind of like basic question what are experiments for why do why do we do experiments so i well for me it's i want my experiments are generally to find out what something looks like so it's the i think i know what it, it looks like this but that's just what we think and we, we, we model or we, we, we kind of made a structure that we go, I think that looks like this, but we don't know until we look at it. So my experiments are to check that it looks like what we think it is. Um, um, we do experiments. So I've said that we um, want to look at the brain, um, but it's really useful to see what happens in the brain when things aren't working um, as they should do. Um, so if someone if someone goes into hospital and uh, there's something wrong with their brain, 
we can do an experiment so we can take a picture of the inside of their um, head to see what's uh, gone wrong. So that's a, another kind of experiment. Um, okay, a couple of quick brain questions, just to follow that up then. Uh, can you read minds? Told you somebody was going to ask that. Alice wants to know, can you read minds, Lucy? No, we can't read minds, unfortunately. <laughs> um, when we look at uh, your brain waves, all we can see is whereabouts they're coming from and how big they are. Um, we can't tell what you're thinking. Um, and somebody, uh, Claire, uh, saw your little brain cat thing. Um, are there, what parts of the brain are there? Can you give us a little quick list of little bits of the brain? So this is the front of the brain. This is the frontal lobe, and this gives you your personality. And then you've got the sides here. So this is um, the temporal part. So this uh, does your hearing. That's where all your hearing is processed. And then my favourite bit is the occipital part of the brain. So this is the back of the brain. And this is where you can see the little eyes on there. This uh, controls your eyesight. Um, so yes. Fantastic. Right. I, I, um, I, I'm sorry, I almost laughed when I rest, read this one. This is a brilliant question. Uh, right. Do you like inventing things? And here's the follow up. This is Esther asking this. And do you like the film Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs? So if you've seen that, please feel comment, free to comment on the film. But do you like inventing things? Well, I love that film, but I'm not very good at inventing things. Um, but I like using things that other people invent <laughs> to do cool things that they haven't thought of with them. So inventing new ways of working with something. Yeah, so reinventing how to use something rather than making a thing. And I certainly would not be as inventive as the guys in that film. <laughs> how about you, Lucy? Well, it's been ages since I've seen that film. I think it was when I was quite little <laughs> that I saw it. Um, but I haven't right. invented anything, but we, yeah, like Abby said, we use things that other people have invented to figure things out. It's great. Um, as physicists, we kind of all get together and invent things together. It's rarely just one person, is it? It's kind of like a whole bunch of people. Right, really quick one for anybody to uh, jump in really quickly. Um, what does NM stand for? Oh, yeah, that was that. I'll take that as on mine. The NM is nanometers. So you know what a meter is? Well, a nano is is nine, 10 to the power of minus nine. So it's, a, it's less than a millionth of the size. So it's a very, it's immense unit of measurement. One millionth the size of a meter. Yes, I think that's a fairly good description. Um, so if you weren't doing your job, the one you're doing now, what would you like to do instead? <laughs> Any thoughts on that? It, would it still be physics? Would it be another bit of physics? I think I'd quite like to work with animals. Um, I, I've been thinking about this during lockdown. Um, I'd, I wouldn't mind, I think I'd quite like to make my own wool um, and work with sheep. I think that was one of the things. Yeah, I, I How think, about you, I think if I would have a different science job, I'd probably be a chemist. Um, uh, make like inventing new chemicals. Um, but if I had a non-science job, it would probably be involved in music somehow. Okay, we've we've had a comment here from Alice. She seems very clear. She's put no maths, no maths. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid if you want to be a physicist, there is going to be some kind of maths around the place. Um, but there are other alternatives as well. So um, you could actually go into apprenticeships and things like that if you're not going the full kind of full on maths the whole time. Uh, but Harriet uh, wants to know, she really likes maths. So what kind of physicist could she be with them with maths? What what she, could she really get into with her maths? I think it gives you a good background to do any type of physics. But if you want to be doing maths every day, then theoretical physics 
it's definitely the way forward. Yes, if any of you have ever seen, what is it, Big Bang Theory, if you want to be Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> if you want to write on whiteboards, doing maths on whiteboards every day, all day. Um, Alice also wants to know, have you got anything around that you've sewed? Because we've seen Lucy's uh, crocheted items. Have you got anything that you've sewed in the room? I don't have anything in the room. I mean, I'm in, this isn't normally my office. Um, <laughs> uh, and I don't. But I can tell you that my most recent sewing project was my wedding dress. So there you go. That was that was my most recent wedding uh, sewing project. <laughs> okay, Rebecca has an interesting question. I assume for Lucy, is it true that we see upside down? Oh, I don't know. Um, Abby, do you know that one? Okay, it goes into the brain upside down because of the mirrors. I think. I think your brain is just very good with it. Okay, excellent. Sorry, <laughs> it's another brain question. I told you, Lucy, loads of brain questions. What happens to your brain when you die? I think, so, your brain waves would stop. Um, you wouldn't be able to detect any brain waves. Um, I, th I think that that's I think that's what pretty much it unless you've unless you've kind of given it away to science it stays in your body doesn't it okay um Lisa would like to know if either of you were brownies and guides did either of you do that I I wasn't a brownie or a guide I was a I was an ambulance cadet instead ambulance I I was a cadet as well yeah I went to the John's ambulance cadet did you do it, Lucy? No, I didn't. Okay, Emma wants to know, uh, do you need a degree to become a physicist? No. You can be a physicist without having a degree. There's lots of different routes available. Yeah. Let's have a look at that badge. What does that say in the middle? I am a physicist. As soon as you ask a question, as soon as you start doing an experiment or finding something out, you are already a physicist, but we have there are apprenticeships to become physicists, there are different routes in, um, but as soon as you start asking questions, you're already a physicist. Aren't you? Right, um, right. Claire wants to know, has any of your experiments backfired? So I guess that basically means gone wrong in a big way. Yeah. I mean, oh, sorry. You go first, Lucy. Oh, I was just going to say, They've gone wrong when I've done something wrong. So if I not set up the experiment correctly um, or um, I can't think of anything exciting that happened when it went wrong. Sorry, <laughs> go on, I'll be. <laughs> yeah, I've had some go wrong quite badly and break some very expensive things. Um, and <laughs> So I, I have to move my samples around on a long stick with tweezers inside a big, big, big chamber. And it's quite fiddly because they're on these little things that you can't hold. And you're, it's a really long stick. And sometimes you drop them inside this system, which you can't get them back out of unless you take it all apart. And sometimes when you drop them, they fall into things that break other things. So, yes, I have, I, they've gone badly wrong and I've broken things quite a few times. <clears throat> okay, Harriet noticed the uh, model of your brain and uh, it's got a slit down the middle, kind of like it's in two different bits. She wants to know why is that there? What is that? Um, so your brain is in two halves and one half of the brain controls your, so the right hand side of your brain controls the left half of your body and the left half of the brain controls the right half of your body. So you have two, two halves. That's fairly simple, isn't it? It grows in two different bits, that's fantastic. Um, and somebody wants to know if they make a noise when they're working brains. Harriet wants to know that. We did a, we had a, um, an experiment where we had so um sensors stuck to somebody's head 
and then um, because your so your brain waves they can be fast, really really fast, or they can be really really slow. Um, and the ones that are really really fast are really you can imagine them as being really high pitched, and the ones that are really slow are really low um, sounds. And we can make tunes with them, um, which is like something cool that we tried. Um, but um, you can imagine that they make a sound, but we wouldn't be able to hear them um, <clears throat> by listening to them. Okay, Katie has a question for both of you. Uh, what's the best bit of your job? What do you like the best out of your job? So I like the fact that it's always different. It's it's always something different to to, to to discover, to be the first person to see something. So I always I find that very exciting. Yeah, I I like that. I like doing an experiment and then finding something that you weren't expecting. Finding something you weren't expecting. This also, I think, kind of uh, answers another question from uh, uh, Emma, which uh, what happens if an experiment goes wrong? What are the consequences of that? It's okay for experiments to go wrong. Um, yeah. Sometimes you can learn a lot when things don't go the way that you want, um, so that when you do it again, um, you learn from it. And sometimes they go wrong and you learn, yeah, you learn something from the, it didn't go exactly what you, how you wanted it to do, you wanted it to do some, one thing, and then it does something else completely different, and then you're like, this is amazing, this is, this is something new to, to look at. Alice wants to know, is physics hard? I think it's about as hard as everything else. So you have to work at it. It's not it's not easy, but it's very rewarding for what you do with it. So if you if you try hard at it, then you'll get results out at the end, I think. Any thoughts, Lucy? Anything to add to that one? A bit hard. Yeah. Um sometimes it can be really hard. Um but it's okay to ask for help. Um, it's why we have research in teams rather than just on your own. Um, so you can work with other people and they can help you as well. Okay, so both Rebecca and Laura, Laurel uh, want to know, so how long did you study for? How long is it, uh, how long did it take to become physicists? Well, I think I'm still learning how to be a physicist every day. Um, <laughs> but I, so I did physics in school with everyone else. And I probably didn't consider myself a physicist then, but I was a physicist because I was doing physics and that's what makes you a physicist. Um, and then when I was doing my degree, because I was doing joint sciences, so I was doing chemistry and physics. So I didn't feel like a physicist then either even though I was doing physics, so I was a physicist. And then when I was doing my PhD, so a PhD is what gives you your doctor title in science. Um, and I finished mine last year. And when I got that piece of paper, I was like, I'm definitely a physicist now. I have this big certificate and I wore this weird, weird red robe uh, and I'm definitely a physicist now. But I think I was a physicist all along. There's loads of people talking about maths and how much they love it. Uh, Rebecca wants to know, do you do fractions? Obviously, she's combating fractions at the moment at school. Do you still use fractions in your job now, Lucy? Yes, yes. Um, I use a lot of maths um, in, in the stuff that I do. Um, and we definitely use fractions. That's fantastic. Um, hang on. Um, Emma wants to know, uh, is there a lot of trial and error? So is it a lot of kind of like getting things right, getting things wrong kind of thing? Definitely, yeah. 
sometimes it can be a bit frustrating when things go wrong um, and you end up having to like do it again and again and again but um, yeah there's a lot of trial and error okay um, Ivy wants to know if you've ever seen explosions <laughs> It was a big one in Exeter today, but uh, have you seen explosions in your job? When I, um, oh, sorry, go on, Abby. Okay, um, we had a, um, a lecture and it was in chemistry um, and we had a, a big, uh, a load of boiling water and a load of um, really, really cold um, liquid nitrogen. And then um, one of our teachers poured the boiling water into the really, really cold um, liquid. And there was a massive explosion and um, all the electrics went off. Um, and it wasn't meant to happen. The lecturer was really, really shocked. Um, everyone started cheering and um they had to come and bring a mop in um yeah so honestly some of the best bits of science is when things go wrong uh rebecca and phoebe abby uh rebecca and phoebe want to know what is the difference between a physicist and a chemist that's that's a very hard question to answer because i think you get lots of different answers so i i think of it as the chemists look at things more in bulk in solution in that kind of way so they're looking at lots of the the thing whereas i look at the individual ones inside inside a material so i'm looking at individual bits of a material and they're more looking at the overall material as a whole and also they're good at making the materials and then i study them i don't make them <laughs> fantastic uh need wants to know how much do you work with other people are you just by yourselves or are you working with other people the whole time? So um, I do a lot of work by myself, but then I join together with other people at different times. So like at the moment I'm working with about three other people, but then next week I might be by myself again for a little bit. Yeah, that's the same with me. Um, we've got a really big group and sometimes we'll work together, um, but quite a lot of the time um, I'm working by myself. Okay, good. Uh, Claire wants to know if either of you use a microscope at all. Anybody? Yeah, I bet yeah, Abby. No, I, use, I use microscope. So one of the pictures on one of my slides was with a normal microscope, and then the other ones are nanoscale microscopes. They're still called microscopes, but yeah. No, and I, I when I was when I was a little when I was uh, like a child. I had a little little microscope that I used to look at all sorts of things with. Okay, Rebecca has asked, um, how how many days do you work? I'm assuming a week <laughs> or something like. So, how hard do you work? Let's put it that way. You know, is there is there a lot of work to do, or how are we doing? Well, I work I work Monday to Friday, like like most people's jobs. So that's how I work but when I was writing my thesis so when I was doing university work it was often a lot more than that how about you Lucy do you yeah, work I hard living <laughs> during the week and then I, I try not I try not to work at the weekends and it's going well so far <laughs> okay Louise wants to know if you have to wear any special clothing I don't know protective clothing white coat. look there's a white coat on my door there and physicists never wear white coats. That's from a different. I life. do. So, I wear. I sometimes have to wear a white coat. I had to wear one the other week to protect myself from the chemicals that I was using. And I often have to wear safety specs, um, and a lot of gloves, mostly to protect my equipment more than to protect myself, though. So I don't want to get the oily stuff from my skin on the equipment. Um, and then obviously at the moment, I'm wear when I'm at work, I'm wearing my mask. So. Lucy, tell us about metal around MRI scanners. Oh, okay. Um, so an MRI scanner is a humongous magnet. Um, and 
it means that if you take anything that's um, metal or magnetic um, near it, um, it will, so an MRI scanner is a massive donut um, magnet and if you have anything metal it just flies through the middle of it which is really dangerous if somebody's lying in the scanner um so before you go in you have to demagnetize so you have to like take off your glasses and um your shoes and uh anything that's metal so that it doesn't hurt you when you're in there um yeah. fantastic i'm just i'm just imagining things flying off your body or something like that I couldn't um, believe it. Sorry. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. We went it, the first time I saw like the big MRI scanner in um the building that I work in. Um they opened the door to the room. So the room is has a big metal um box around it to stop the magnetic fields from the magnet um going anywhere else, just staying in that room. Um and someone held up their belt um, outside the room with the door open and the belt went, it was hanging, so usually it would be like hanging like this, but when they opened the door to the magnet room, it went like that. Um, couldn't believe it. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, Rebecca wants to know, what did you want to be when you were younger and what were your GCSEs? So were you always wanting to be scientists and uh, what GCSEs did you do? Do you want to go first, Abby? Yeah, so I, in, as I said in my slides, when I was doing picking my GCSEs, I wanted to be a marine biologist. So I did the science that I was allowed to do, but um, I also really enjoyed lots of other things. So I did, I did music because um, I liked music a lot. I did history because I liked learning about the past, and I can't remember what else I did. I didn't have that many options available to me, but I did history and I did geography and I did music. Um, oh, and I did, and I did, did French because we had to do a language and that was that was the one that I was any good at. How about you Lucy? Um, I did, so for my GCSEs I did music and I did geography um, and all the sciences and maths um, I really loved geography I thought that that was what I wanted to do as a job um, and then I really liked volcanoes and then I thought that's what I wanted to do as a job. Um, and then there's a kind of physicist called a geophysicist and they look at, at how the earth, how the earth works. So um, like how it was uh, formed and looking at um, like earthquakes and things. I thought I wanted to do that, but then I decided on being a physicist. Um, Okay, Abby, um, we've got well and truly down the nanometer hole because uh, somebody, has <laughs> somebody has now asked, uh, what is the difference between a millimeter and a nanometer? Is there a big difference? Obviously, they know what a millimeter is. So uh, how much difference is there? So a in a millimeter, you could fit, <clears throat> let me get the number right, uh, <laughs> 100,000, no, a million nanometers even. So you've got to add one and, and then you've got to put six zeros on it. So Sorry. that would be like you, the size of you against like the size of, oh, I don't even know how big that is, <laughs> against a thousand times your like a racetrack. So that's, that, that's quite, quite a big difference. Uh, Ivy wants to know if anyone likes Vikings. She does. <laughs> I think they're pretty cool. Um, Rebecca did is talking about we did volcanoes at school. Volcanoes, I mean, Lucy said she might like to do that as a job, but that's a real job, isn't it, Lucy? You can actually yeah. spend your life working on volcanoes. I think it's called a volcanologist. Um, I remember seeing some really cool documentaries about. Um, like the scientists going down into volcano craters and like looking at the magma that comes out of the volcano and seeing how old it is. And a lot of that's physics because they look at like how it flows and how it explodes. And... Yeah. 
Uh, Liz wants to know, has anyone got injured in experiments? Have either of you hurt yourself in experiments? No, haven't. We, we're quite good at being safe. So. Yeah, uh, I, I once did one where I had to be covered in flame retardant overalls and a gas mask. I had to wear this the whole time and all the rest of it. So that was a big, exciting kind of day. But yeah, we, we spend a lot of time and effort trying to keep ourselves safe during experiments, don't we? Uh, right. Um, right. Louise wants to know, any machinery or objects you use, what kind of equipment are you using in your laboratories? So, as I, it was the picture at the start, so sometimes I use big, big metal pieces of equipment, um, which is the, was the picture at the start of, the, of today. And then sometimes I use a little tiny box, it's about this big, um, that just has a tiny little piece of metal in it. Um, and it just looks, it has little circuit in it and it's really small and I can fit it on my desk so um so sometimes we use um sensors a bit like this um but then what I what I like I've been looking at um is um the room that we do our scans in is made of metal um so I have a big metal box that um, I do experiments in. Um, so yeah, I've got a big metal box and sometimes I'll do some soldering. Um, it's quite varied. Claire wants to know why physics is so full of long words. <laughs> Anybody got an answer for that one? I think lots of science has long words in it. And acronyms, like really strange acronyms. <laughs> When, whenever you learn that anything, you, you have to learn a new language to deal with it, don't you? And that, uh, I think science is because it would be longer to explain everything rather than use one word to do it. And of course, all the short words have already been used, haven't they? Um, Neve wants to know what is the favourite part of your job? What do you really like about your job? So my favourite part is definitely I get to I get to sit there, which doesn't sound very exciting, at a computer. It's quite boring. But then I get to use these little pieces of kit or these massive pieces of kit. And I know that I'm seeing something that I can't see with my eyes, but I know is there. Um, so that's very exciting. I find it really exciting that we can we can find out things about the body by just looking at it from the outside. So like with an MRI scanner, you can take a picture of inside the body um, and you can see uh, what your brain looks like. I had an MRI scan um, for the first time a couple of months ago for some research one of our friends was doing and she, um, I had an MRI scan, I could see my brain and I just thought it was amazing. <laughs> Uh, Claire, Claire has, her sister lives in Hawaii in a department with volcanologists. So you got the right word there. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yep, absolutely brilliant. And uh, Rebecca's telling me about all the different parts of the crust, the mantle, the outer core, the inner core. We may have some geophysicists in the room. Uh, yeah. so that's actually going on. Um, hold on. Um, do you do any baking in physics? So <laughs> is there any kind of baking cookery, that kind of thing? I mean, we do it to give each other cakes, but... Um... <laughs> there, was a, there was a cake, there was a bake-off, a physics bake-off, where like everyone in the department made cakes, and then there was a judge. I can't remember who was the best physics cake, wasn't it? <laughs> right, we're getting towards the end now. Um, sorry. That we've had so many questions. I'm only managing to read out about one in three because there's so many that have been sent in. So I'm very sorry for anybody who we're not getting to. Uh, we'll just take a couple of more and then we'll ask you uh, our questions again in a couple of uh, minutes. Uh, so I'm going to bunch together a whole load of questions that I've been seeing, Lucy. I'm afraid it's another one for you. It's, it's generally about can we live without brains? What happens? Can you still function without a brain? Um, so basically, I'll, I'll put it together. Are there are there creatures without brains? You know, could can animals exist without brains? What do you think? I don't know if there are any animals that exist without a brain. Um, 
what your brain um you it controls like the different parts of your body so me wiggling my finger and um, there's a part of the brain that is like lighting up when I wiggle my finger and um so I don't think that we we can't live without a brain because um <laughs> it controls our bodies and um it makes us who we are uh, as well um Alice wants to know if anybody plays Roblox I don't or Roblox I don't know what that is do either of you know what that is I I have played with them a long long time ago what are they it was I it, it wasn't mine it was one of my one of my cousins and it just built like block toys that you build together okay cool um so Cara wants to know what it's like um are physicists mainly men, men or women, and what's it like being a woman uh, in a physics environment? So at the moment, it is there are quite a lot of men, but there are more and more women, and so that certainly there's lots of women where we work in Nottingham, um, particularly kind of younger women. Um, but it's it doesn't really matter whether you're a man or a woman in in, in the physics. Where, where we work anyway, where it's just you, you're doing your physics and that's what matters. It depends which type of physics you go into as well. Um, in medical physics, imaging physics, um, there are quite a lot more women um, than in, say, uh, theoretical physics. Um, Right, we've had so many questions on brains. I'm sorry, I wanted to make sure that everybody got to ask various questions about different things. Um, if you've still got questions about brains, that's absolutely brilliant. I'm sure if you look things up online, you will find out a whole shed load more about brains. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions again now. So uh, thank you very much to Abby and Lucy for answering all these questions. That's absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to ask you again, do you kind of know what a physicist is now? Hopefully, we've got a few more people. Half of you have voted now. Three more seconds. Oh, people are still voting. Actually, I'm going to keep it open while people are still voting. Oh, there we go. Right, so 100%. Yes, that's brilliant. So we've actually answered a question a bit now about what a physicist is. Um, OK, and then our final question. Do you think you would might like to be a physicist when you grow up? Okay, is everybody done? Okay, I'm about to close that. Some people are obviously thinking quite hard about it. Okay, shall I show those results? We've not quite managed to convince everybody, but I still think that's pretty good, especially compared to where we started. So that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much for everybody doing that. Um, so we've reached the end of this evening. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of your questions. You were asking so many brilliant ones and uh, we uh, had to um, actually get through as many as we could. Um, there's going to be, when I shut this down, there's going to be a little survey. It would only take two minutes. So if you fancy filling that in afterwards, that would be absolutely brilliant as well to find out a little bit more about what you think about physics. But I would really, really like to thank Abby and Lucy for coming along this evening. Um, they've had, um, they've told us a great deal about what they've done and how they became physicists. Any final thoughts from either of you? Just, it's okay if you don't know whether you want to do physics. I mean, I don't think either of us wanted to know that we wanted to do physics when we were little. And then it just happened as we grew up and learned more about physics. 
Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you very much. If um, any of the leaders are also leaders of guides and rangers, we're doing this again next Monday with two new physicists uh, for the older age group. So we're going to be talking at a kind of teenage level at that point. Um, but it's absolutely fantastic that you've all joined us today. Um, I really hope you enjoy the badge if you're doing it and uh, going to continue to do it and uh, watch out for all the other things. So we now have a YouTube channel where all of these meter physicist uh, events have happened. They're all, uh, they're all on there as well. And there's some how-to guides as well. So if you look up IOP nations and regions on YouTube, you'll find a whole load of uh, video footage that helps out with this as well. So thank you all for coming. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from Abby. Goodbye from Lucy. And thank you very much to everybody for uh, being with us this evening.